Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out this FlySky receiver that I already have installed here in this 2 inch uh, micro drone. Uh, this is the Gep RC Hummingbird. And you obviously can't see the receiver, it's already installed. So I'll put a picture up here of what the receiver looks like front and back. It's a FlySky receiver that has telemetry. Um, essentially, what it is is, uh, well, it's got a weird name for first of all, it's called the FLI 14. And it's essentially. Uh, this receiver here, the uh, FLI T10, which has dual antennas here, and so that's what basically what they did is they took this receiver, I think they shrunk it down a little bit, and then they turned it into a single antenna little micro receiver here, and it's got a similar type of connector here. Uh, you solder this directly to your flight controller. Obviously, only one antenna, not two. And if you saw the review video for this one, this is basically a shrunken down version of uh, this receiver here. This is another FlySky receiver, the FSIA6B. Obviously, all these server connectors, but it's this. It's got the diversity antennas, the two antennas. So that's essentially what's going on. Is uh, if you don't want these bulky antennas, but you still want the uh, FlySky 2A protocol, uh, but you want the telemetry back to your transmitter, whether it's uh, like an uh, FSI-6 or a jumper radio, for example, or something like a Devo radio, something you can get telemetry back from the FlySky system. Uh, this is what these receivers are for. This is shrunken down versions for uh, smaller craft and they're lighter. And then the one that's in here, the FLI-14, that's even smaller. Now, uh, we did do some range testing with this because I know everyone's wondering how this would work. Surprisingly, very, very good range. Uh, it does one of the one of the side benefits of using these uh, FlySky telemetry receivers, it does uh, allow you to get RSSI on your OSD, and so I have that in the flight demo. Uh, I did two flights, and on the first one, my my radio was at the standard power setting, um, I, which I, by the way, I'm using the Jumper T8SG V2 Plus. Uh, that allows you to change your power. The default power, I believe, on the uh, fly, uh, the FlySky radio, the transmitter, the, uh, the i6, is something like 100 milliwatts, perhaps less, maybe 80 milliwatts. I had my jumper at 150 milliwatts. And of course, people say that it's not really 150 milliwatts. I don't, I don't know how many ways of measuring it, so I'm just saying that's what the setting was. And I flew this away uh, maybe 150, 175 meters away. And the, bar the RSSI barely blipped down any, I think the lowest number I got was 96 from 99. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it was kind of interesting. So what I did is I did a second flight where I took the power down from 150 milliwatts to 10 milliwatts on my jumper radio. So much, much lower power output. And I did the same kind of, I flew kind of far away. And again, the RSSI barely blip down. I think I might have dropped a little bit lower than 96. I'm not sure you could watch the flight demo. But I didn't get any fail safes. Um, yeah, I don't really fly in anywhere super large or I go and go far away. And I don't really feel like just flying this way a mile and then letting it crash somewhere random. Um, so I just decided I'll just reduce the power and see if I get similar range. And I got full range uh, on 10 milliwatts, so I'm thinking this receiver is probably pretty good in terms of range. Um, obviously, this little tiny antenna here, and it fits into very small frames. So I, I'm thinking this is a good receiver to check out for your little micro drones. If you're, you know, doing mostly park flying, I would say it's going to be pretty safe. I'd say up to 300 meters. Um, anything beyond that, I think you're probably taking a risk. Because uh, these, I don't think these antennas really were meant to go that far, but you know, in my testing, it did seem to be fine. And I, of course, I couldn't go much further than about 175 meters, and it didn't get any uh, reduction in my RSSI signal, so it seemed to be pretty good. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and show you a couple of those uh, flights I took, and yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, so this is the uh, first flight on full power of the radio, uh, 150 milliwatts. And when I get to the furthest point that I can at this little park that I fly at, I can't pretty much see any drop-off in the RSSI at all. And I, of course, 
have uh, no issues with the control link at all. It's all working just fine. So, uh, at least in this flight, it looks like the, the signal is very good. Now in this flight, I reduced the power all the way down to 10 microwatts, which is really small. Uh, and I still been getting fail saves at the end of this park, also about 125, 30 meters away. But I was able to uh, see a reduction in the RSSI link. Uh, obviously, I think I the lowest number I saw was something like 39%. Uh, but it does kind of bounce around based on my orientation of the, of the actual drone. But it does give you a sense as to that low of power, I'm still maintaining like that. I've, I've tested other FlySky receivers on my 10 microwatts and I get fail safes within about 10 to 20 feet. So this is pretty impressive.